Welcome to the NTD Technical Corner. Today we're going to be reviewing the Shark Machine from Groupus Parpus, a very premium high-end fifth axis machine tool available from Leader CNC Technologies in the UK. Now, Paul, with your vast experience in machine tools, um, let's start from the ground up. What makes this machine so unique? What makes it so special? I think I think when you look at machines like this, we will always say it's about the application that you're going to do. What are you machining? What are the materials? What are the size? The weights of the part. Um, but this machine is a travelling column construction essentially. So your your x-axis is moving along along the column. Um, the machine size this can go up to five meters in the x-axis. Um, but there's varying sizes in between, which you can obviously talk to leader CNC about. Over one meter in the y-axis, which is you know, identifies with a lot of companies as to where they want to get and fit those larger parts. Um, but you've got a very heavy duty base on this machine and you've got lots of points and areas on the machine, which we'll touch on as we go through, which help the machine maintain accuracy, um, help keep the machine cool to, to help repeatability and certain things they use like rack and pinion on the x-axis and things like that, which ensure that you are getting, you know, almost the best build you can on a machine like this. And of course, what you want to try and do with that fixed table is, is, is get any machining vibrations out of the base of the machine, and which is something that this Gruppus Parpos from Leader CNC can do. So it's all about the design, really, Paul? I think so, yeah. I mean, it's about the design of the machine. These guys, I mean, you know, the heritage here, it's an Italian machine. It fits perfectly with you, so good to be reviewing <laughs> it with you. But we, we visited many factories in Italy where they're making machines, and they do, do really pride themselves on on building top quality products. Um, you know, most of Europe, in fact, where the machines are built in Spain or Italy, you tend to find they really do come out with a with a premium edge to it. And I know having seen these machines like you have in the field, you are talking about equipment that is, is equipped to be able to produce precision parts. Now you mentioned precision, you mentioned accuracy. Now, when going, going into machine tools of this size, over five meters in, in length, you know, how hard is it to maintain that accuracy over that size? Well, I suppose it's science, isn't it? The bigger the machine from one end to the other, you are not going to be able to necessarily maintain the same tolerances as you would on, on a smaller machine. But what you've got to try and do is, 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 is maximise and get the best you can over that possible area. Um, there's certain aspects to it. I mentioned the rack and pinion. It's a very uh, accurate way or a, a very good way of moving an axis and also allows you to maintain um, precision to a degree more than maybe some other mechanical systems that are used. Um, but also controlling things like the growth of the machine, linear scales, making sure that the kinematics where the machine moves are continually fed back to the control in order to give you the optimum in precisional accuracy. So it's kind of compensating for any deviations. Is that what you're saying? That's Paul? that's really what you need to do with a machine of, of such a size. You need to continually, you know, gone are the days with the analog machines where where part machining paths were sort of like this. You now you've got that kind of that curvature when and, and you've got continual feedback to the control. Am I in the right position? Do I need to move slightly? And and, and that is happening with, with infinite movements. This is really interesting. So, Paul, what we're saying here is, is that the, the mechanical aspect of the machine tool, there's a marriage between the software of the machine tool and it's software that's kind of been evolving more significantly over the years than the hardware. Is that correct? It's true. But what you've got to remember is with hardware, things wear. So so you've got to try and build a machine that, that gives you reliable hardware, which is going to is going to sort of stand the test of time. I think what's interesting about this particular machine, I know we're going to talk about quite a few of the features. I mean, let's start with the tool changer. This was one one thing I looked at and there are options on the tool changes as well so um, you know there are from what we talk about here there are ways of, of, of having different configurations and styles but here you'll note that the tool changer is almost like a fixed asset on the machine whereas some column machines have tool changes that move along with the with the x-axis now some might say well that will mean you can change your tools faster right yeah you will but what you've also got to remember is the the way, if you're carrying a tool carousel backwards and forwards on an x-axis, is that either going to slow you down 
even if it doesn't, is it going to lightly um, put more stresses and strains into the machine than it would if you were just going back to a home point to pick up a tool and come back again? And that will affect accuracies over long periods of time. So these are points you have to consider. Really good point. And I um, mentioned in staying on the theme of the, the, the tool changer, this particular one that you can see on the screen there accommodates for 40 tools, I believe. But there's also other versions that can accommodate for more tools. Now, mentioning configurations, different configurations, you've got kind of quite a lot of flexibility with this machine tool. So you've got spindle configurations and different table configurations. Let's start with the different spindle configurations that are available on this fifth axis machine tool. And if you can explain to our audience as well, Paul, how the fifth axis head works, because it's not only tilting in the B axis, it's also tilting laterally in, the, in this manner. Well, that's an option. And I think when you looked through, when we were researching and uh, having known quite a bit about Grappus Parpus before, I knew that their head technology was quite um, flexible, a lot to offer. And having looked at the brochure, which I know will we'll illustrate throughout this technical corner, it, it comes down to meter options. You have got a myriad of options with head technology here. So like you've correctly identified, even if you just want to do positional um, head movements, or if you want to do contouring, you can do, if you want to use a head to actually do that sort of tipping up motion, as well as sort of left to right, you can do that as well. If you're after significant amounts of torque, there is that capability as well. If you're after extreme speeds, you can do that too. Now, what you would find with a lot of machine tool builders is you'll go to them and they'll say, here's your option for your spindle. You can either have A or you can have B. Not the case here. You've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You really have. And I think that's when you can start to tailor the machine around the application that you're doing. So without going into masses of detail about what each head does, there is so many options on the head that you can really target the types of parts that you're doing. But what's important to mention about this um, head as well is, is the RAM. Now this RAM is almost like caged in a, almost like a box in box construction, which means it's fully supported as it's, as it's moving in and out on, it, on its axes. Now, why is that important? Well, if you can imagine if you've got a 1.2 meter to Y axis, which is really where the, the motion is here, you know, are you gonna experience droop the further out of the end of the table you get? So the better the construction around that spindle or around that ram, the better, and that all feeds into the head technology here. So again, Paul, um, all round rigidity to, to dampen any vibration, Cooling eliminate of the spindle, any vibration. Reducing growth and all of those things are, are you know, part and parcel. And you can have a head changer on this machine. And that's really so, important point. Yeah, so you can have a head changer. So let's say you identify with a particular head where you go, that's perfect for that application, but actually, you know what? You know, tomorrow I've got some real hard alloy steels and I need to change my direction and the course of, of, of machining on here. So you can then change the head in order to be able to accommodate the needs of that machine. Ultimate too. flexibility, Paul. Mm. Roofing heads, finishing heads, dependent on the application and the parts that you are machining. Now, one question for you, Paul. This is going a little bit off on a different tangent, but just something that's popped into my mind. In, on some traditional type fifth axis machine tools, the actual component is moving with the spindle. I assume by having the component static on a machine tool like this, again, you're achieving more stability because the tool is going around and contouring around the component. Would that be a fair assessment? It would because it all depends on the size and the weight of the part. You know, you might have a, a, a fourth axis unit and a part in between a tail stop. If that, if that part weighs a ton, you know, you, you, you're having to maneuver a part when you might choose to keep it fixed in one position. If you keep it fixed in one position and you're not moving it backwards and forwards with, a, with the x-axis because the table's fixed, you can then use your spindle in order to get to the points you need to get to. So it's a good point because with these sort of five axis heads and then having a fourth axis unit onto the machine, you're essentially going up to six axes. Can you do six axis machining? Well, no, that's not the point. The point is, is that you can then make the part in the best possible way and not have to make it because the machine has got limitations. And there, does, there doesn't seem to be any limitations with this machine tool. Now it's controlled by the Hydenine. You mentioned kinematics for thermal growth, but also kin kinematics that are built into the Hydenine control system. Firstly, you know, some of our audience may not be aware of what kinematics are. 
Um, they may be aware of the, the, the fantastic control system, which is Hyde and I. Can you explain what kinematics can do when fifth axis machining? I mean, the kinematics of this machine is, is, is where it's moving, the axis movement. Um, and, and then what's happening, a little bit like what we spoke about earlier, is that's feeding back to the control, the scales that are incorporated into this machine and enable you to make those kind of finite movements, but it's the feedback to the control to ensure you're getting the accuracy. So really the, the, the relationship between the kinematics and the control is key to maintaining tolerances and positional accuracy of the machine. Paul, it's, a, it, it, it's obviously, you've made me aware of what a premium machine tool this is, and I'm sure you've made our audience aware um, of this too. So Paul, let's, let's wrap this up in 30 seconds. I think um, Italian built machine, you've, you've, we've used the word probably too much in this, in this um, uh, broadcast, premium quality. I think the fact you've got the, the, the Y axis, which has um, got a counterbalance on it in order to stop that droop, which we mentioned. The machine is made to VDI standards, which people will compare that to ISO when it comes to its, its, its accuracies. And the, the VDI standard is recognized as you know, one of the world leading uh, methods of building a machine tool. The access of the machine, we can see the size of the machine up to five meters with 1200 in the Y, the options on the tool changer. And of course, what we mentioned and probably critically important, the capabilities of the head, but the flexibility of the head too. Paul, absolutely fantastic. We didn't even mention, did we, the, the ergonomics and the accessibility. Beautiful Beauty machine. Beautiful machine. Even for little people, they can get in. <laughs> I'd still struggle. <laughs> Paul, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. So if you want to find out a little bit more about this fantastic machine tool, contact Leader CNC Technologies.